Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Need Preparation, where we'll be looking at previous year questions of biology in medical entrance examinations in India, we'll be dealing with transport in plants. This is the 11th, this is the 10th chapter in biology in the grade 11 syllabus for CBSE. Let's look at our first question. Translocation of organic materials in plants is explained by active transport, transpirational pull, inhibition theory, mass flow hypothesis. Let's look at the question in general. This is talking about the translocation of organic materials. Now, when organic materials are transported into the phloem from the leaves, they move against concentration gradient. And for that, they need energy, which is provided by active transport. Having said that, let's look at our following options. Option D, mass flow hypothesis and Option B, transpirational pull, both are bulk transport. And these require little to no energy. Transpirational pull affects the xylem, which is again a part of bulk transport. So options D and B are incorrect. What about option C, inhibition theory? Inhibition is related to enzymes. Well, we're talking about the translocation of material. So option C is incorrect. The right answer is option A, active transport, because when we're transporting organic materials from the leaves to the phloem and from the phloem to the sites for storage, they require energy because they're moving against the concentration gradient. So that is active transport. Active transport is the type of transport which requires energy. So option A is the right option. Next question. The main function of phloem is the translocation of A food, B water, C minerals, D air. Let's look at our following options. Air is translocated by stomata in leaves, and lenticels in the stem. So option D is incorrect. Option C, minerals. Minerals are translocated along with water in the xylem. So option C is incorrect. Option B, water is also incorrect because that, the translocation of water takes place in the xylem. Therefore, the right answer is option A, food, food is, translocated in phloem and the main function of phloem itself is the translocation of food. Let's move on. In rainy season, door gets swelled due to A, imbibition, B, diffusion, C, transpiration, D, respiration. So when the door gets swelled, we know that doors are usually made of wood and this wood it adsorbs water without forming a solution of it. And that is known as imbibition. And when you look at the other options, option D, respiration, is for the consuming of energy in cells. So the production, so the release of energy from food is known as respiration in cells. Option D is incorrect. Option C, transpiration. This is the process of losing water through the stomata in order to facilitate transport. So option C is incorrect. Option B, diffusion. It is the movement of substances from higher concentration to lower 
concentration. So option B is incorrect. The right answer is option A, imbibition. This is the adsorption of water. Adsorption means sticking of water to the surfaces without forming a solution. And that happens in the bark of plants, the wood, and in rainy season, doors, which are made of wood, adsorbs water without forming a solution, so they swell up. So doors swell during rainy season due to the process of imbibition. Option A is the right option. Next question, which of the following helps in ascent of sap? So the ascent of sap is the transport of sap containing water and minerals against gravity, so up a tree. So root pressure helps in the ascent of sap. It pushes sap from the roots, basically prov providing positive hydrostatic pressure from the roots. <clears throat> and then we have transpiration, which helps in the ascent of sap. Transpiration is the loss of water at leaves. So this creates suction and that is a big part for transport of sap the ascent of sap in tall trees is primarily due to transpiration and capillarity is the reason why water travels so high up the sap travels so high up because capillarity is present and the reason why is due to fine vessels so the vessels in the trees are very fine and Therefore, liquid rises up due to the property known as capillarity. This is also present in fountain pens. So, root pressure, transpiration, capillarity, all three of these help in the ascent of sap. So, therefore, option D, all of these is the right answer. If we take A, B, or C, then we will be saying that if we take A, if we take A as the right answer, then we are saying that B and C are incorrect which is not true because all three of these help together. So option D has to be the right answer. Next question. Hydroponics is nutrient-less culture, water-less culture, soil-less culture, none of these. Options A and B are incorrect. And how do I know that they are incorrect? Nutrient-rich, nutrient-less culture and water-less culture is essentially not possible because plants require nutrients and water in order to grow and in order to do photosynthesis. So options A and B are incorrect. But what is hydroponics? Hydroponics is growing plants in a in an aqueous nutrient rich medium so therefore option c soil less culture is correct because high in hydroponics we're growing up plants in aqueous nutrient rich medium and aqueous means it the medium is in water so basically the plants are growing without soil and therefore Soilless culture is the right option. And since C is correct, we can safely say that D is not correct. And the reason why we're using hydroponics is to identify nutrients. So which nutrients promote what factor? So that is the reason why hydroponics is very popular. It is used in research. Next question, during Na plus K plus pump, this is the sodium potassium pump, three Na plus and two K plus are transported, one Na plus and two K plus are transported, three Na plus and three K plus are transported, D depends on the requirement of the cell. So in this Na plus K plus pump, sodium ions in the external medium is actually 14 times more than inside the axoplasm. And 
K plus, which is present in the interior, that is the axoplasm, has 20 to 30 times more concentration than in the outside. So in order to maintain this condition, 3Na plus and 2K plus are transported. So N K plus is transported from inside to outside and Na plus is transported from outside to inside. So therefore, option A, 3Na plus and 2K plus are transported is the right answer. If we were to use B, C, or D, then the condition that uh, Na plus will have 14 times more and K plus will have 20 to 30 times more will, be, will not be satisfied. Therefore, option A is the right option. Next question. Excessive loss of water causes wilting of leaves. It can be prevented by keeping the plant in bright light, spraying the, spraying the plant with alcohol, applying Vaseline on the leaf surface, adding high amounts of fertilizers to the soil. The excessive loss of water in leaves is due to transpiration. So this is when water is lost through the stomata in order to create suction. However, if there is excess of transpiration, it can also lead to lack of water in leaves, which causes wilting. So we need to find out which of these prevents transpiration from occurring. Option A, keeping the plant in bright light. Sunlight induces more photosynthesis. And that means that it requires more nutrients, which effectively means more transpiration. So therefore, option A is incorrect. And similarly, if we add high amounts of fertilizers to the soil, then the plant would start making more food, which again requires more photosynthesis and more transpiration. So option D is also incorrect. Option B, spraying the plant with alcohol. This has no effect whatsoever on transpiration because any liquid can be absorbed by the leaves in their epidermis due to foliar feeding. So therefore, option B is incorrect. However, we can safely conclude from these that option C is the right answer. Vaseline, it blocks the stomata instead of getting absorbed into it. Vaseline blocks the stomata and therefore transpiration does not occur. So option C, applying Vaseline on the leaf surface is the main way we can prevent wilting of leaves due to excessive loss of water. Next question, water potential of pure water and its solution are zero and one, zero, zero, zero and more than one, zero and less than one. But what is water potential? This is the difference between potential of a given solution of water and pure water. So if we have a solution here and if we have pure water here, then the solution would still require more water. So water starts flowing here due to osmosis. So the requirement, the thirst for more water is referred to as water potential. And if the water potential is due to the presence of solute in the medium, then this water potential is referred to as solute potential. And the value of solute potential for 
any solution is always negative and the water potential for pure water is always zero because water without any minerals or nutrients inside it always has a water potential of zero so since water potential of pure water is zero and the water potential of a solution is equal to its solute potential which is always negative we can conclude that option d is the right option Next question, in which method of transport in the plasma membrane does not require a carrier molecule? We have active transport, facilitated diffusion, simple diffusion, and Na plus K plus pump as our options. So which of these does not require a carrier molecule? Let's look at each of our options. Option D, Na plus K plus pump, requires a carrier molecule. The pump itself is the carrier. So there is a molecule in the membrane which pulls three Na plus into one medium and pulls two K plus into the other medium. So therefore, option D is incorrect. What about option B, facilitated Diffusion. Facilitated diffusion happening in plasma membrane requires a protein carrier. Facilitated diffusion is often used by proteins because the lipid bilayer prevents water soluble proteins from entering. So the facilitated diffusion imply, uh, uses a protein molecule in the plasma membrane, which essentially flips 180 degrees in order to admit the water soluble proteins inside. So option B, facilitated diffusion is incorrect. What about option A, active transport? Active transport requires the use of energy, which is provided by adenosine triphosphate. So we consider that as incorrect. The right answer is option C, simple diffusion, because simple diffusion is the movement of substances across a membrane from higher concentration to lower concentration example water and that does not require any carrier molecule it only is dependent on the concentration in both sides so option c is the right option next question seed increases in its volume by adsorption of water through osmosis plasmolysis imbibition diffusion So diffusion is the movement of substances from higher concentration to lower concentration. And we consider this incorrect because there are a lot of diffusion processes taking in the body and there are some specific modes of diffusion and seed increasing in its volume by the absorption of water is not just due to diffusion. There has to be some other more specific way in which seed increases in its volume by absorption of water. Option A, osmosis. Osmosis requires a semi-permeable membrane to absorb water. And this is incorrect because one, we don't have a semi-permeable membrane in a seed, two, the process here is adsorption and not absorption. There's a big difference between the two. Option B, plasmolysis. Plasmolysis is the death of a cell due to less water. And this less water is caused by, this less water is caused by exosmosis. So if we place a cell in a hypertonic medium, water moves from the cell into the surroundings, which decreases the content of water inside the cell, which leads to plasmolysis. 
Over here, the seed is increasing in its volume and not decreasing. So option B is incorrect. The right answer is option C, imbibition. Imbibition is the adsorption of water and it does this process without forming a solution. So imbibition is the right answer because imbibition also helps doors in swelling up with water during the rainy season. And so it also increases the volume of seeds due to the adsorption of water. So option C, imbibition is the right option. Next question. Minerals are known to enter the plant root by means of a number of mechanisms, including all of the following except one. Which of the following is not a mechanism for moving minerals into roots? So let's look at each of the processes here. Active transport. This is the transport across a membrane which requires energy in the form of ADP which requires energy and active transport occurs in root for some solutes. So therefore option B is incorrect. Option D, cation exchange. Cation exchange is undertaken by potassium in order to enter into roots. So option D is incorrect. Option C, proton pump. Proton pump is a mixture of the processes of chemiosmosis and active transport. So basically, the root is actively transporting water into it by using osmosis to transfer some chemicals using cationic exchange. So Option C is also incorrect. The right answer is option A, foliar feeding. And the reason why foliar feeding is not a mechanism for moving minerals into roots is that foliar feeding by itself is feeding fertilizer directly on the leaves. So, Therefore, foliar feeding occurs in leaves and not roots. So option A is the right option. And the reason why it's the right option is because active transport, proton pump, and cationic exchange all occur on the roots, but foliar feeding does not. Next question. A botanist discovered a mutant plant that was unable to produce materials that form the Casparian strip. This plant would be unable to transport water or solutes to the leaves, unable to use its sugar as a sugar sink, able to exert greater root pressure than the normal plant, unable to control amounts of water and solutes it absorbs. So the question is indirectly asking you the function of the Casparian strip. And what is the function of the Casparian strip? It regulates water flow between outer tissue and vascular cylinder. So in the outer tissue, the wa water flows between this cell wall and the cell membrane, which is faster. But as we reach the Casparian strips, water is forced to move through the cytoplasm, thus, we're thus the plants are able to control the water flow towards the vascular cylinder. So let's look at each of the following options. Option A, unable to transport water or solutes to the leaves. This is incorrect. The reason why is that Casparian strips regulate water flow. So if there were no Casparian strips, the water would still continue to flow through the outer through the uh, outer parts of the cells and therefore it will reach 
the vascular cylinder, etc. So they are able to transport water, but the problem is it will be uncontrolled. So therefore, option A is incorrect. Option B, unable to use its sugar as a sugar sink. This sugar sink occurs in the phloem. So it is when by active transport, the sugar is transferred to the phloem and then using the higher concentration of sugar at that end, the phloem takes water from the xylem and then uses the extra water in order to move the sugars. So since this happens in the phloem and the phloem does not have Casparian strips, option B is incorrect. Option C, able to exert a greater root pressure than the normal plant. Now, when you do not regulate water flow, the vascular cylinder is clogged with water. And when the vascular cylinder is clogged with water, there will, there will be lesser root pressure. So therefore, it will, so a plant without Casparian strips would not be able to exert a greater root pressure because of the lack of Casparian strips. So option C is incorrect. The right answer is option D, unable to control amounts of water and solutes it absorbs because of the uncontrolled water flow through the cell wall and the cell membrane through the outer reaches of the cell. Next question. If a cell A with DPD4 bars is connected to cells B, C, and D, whose OP and TP are respectively 4 and 4 for B, 10 and 5 for C, 7 and 3 for D, and all of these are measured in bars, the flow of water will be in this chain. There are four chains given. We, know, we need to find out which of these is correct. But over here, there are a lot of abbreviations. Let's debunk them. So DPD stands for diffusion pressure deficit. So that means extra pressure. And OP stands for osmotic pressure. And TP stands for total pressure. And the formula for DPD, diffusion pressure deficit, is OP minus TP. And another thing that you should be knowing is that water flows from lower DPD to higher DPD. So DPD is sort of an excessive fullness on the part of the cell. So if it has higher DPD, then it means that it's stuffed with water. But when it has lower DPD, that means it's not stuffed with water. So therefore, water can still flow into it. Now, we already know the DPD of A. That is four bars. We need to find out the ones for B, C, and D in order to find out the flow of water. So for B, we have four as the OP and four bars as the TP. So OP minus TP, that is four minus four, is equal to zero bars. For cell C, that will be 10 minus five, which is equal to five bars. And option D, it'll be 7 minus 3, which is equal to 4 bars. So the DPD is a sort of thirst, and this thirst means that lower DPD would imply that, the, that there is full of water, and higher DPD implies that there needs to be some more water supply. So that effectively means that the lowest DPD here is for cell B, and the highest DPD is for cell C. So the water must flow from B 
into A and D, any of these, because both have the same DPD. And from A and D, this must flow into C. And the only option where this is working is option C, B to A, C and D, because B has to also supply some water of its own to C. So B is the lowest, it should supply to the others. So B to A, C and D is the right option. So option C is the right option. Next question, a boy is studying transport of a certain type of molecules into the cell. He finds the transport slows down when the cells are poisoned with a chemical that inhibits energy production. Under normal circumstances, the molecules studied by the boy is probably transported by. So the molecules here slow down in their transport when the cells are poisoned with a chemical that inhibits energy production. So this fragment of the question gives you the idea that the molecules are transported using energy. So there is energy required for transporting this certain type of molecule. So we need to find out which of these contains energy. So option A, simple diffusion, where the substance moves from higher concentration to lower concentration, does not require energy. It is completely dependent on concentration, so it's incorrect. Option B, osmosis. Again, diffusion through a semi-permeable membrane, so no energy required. So option B is incorrect. Option D, facilitated diffusion. Now we know that in facilitated diffusion, a protein in the cell membrane rotates in order to bring the protein from the outside to the inside and the inside to the outside. And facilitated diffusion, again, is only dependent on concentration. So therefore, option D is incorrect. The right answer is option C, active transport, because this is a kind of transport that requires energy. And so when the cells are poisoned with something that inhibits energy, active transport does not take place. So the certain type of molecule slows down in its transport. So option C is the right option. Now, which of the statements is or are not correct? So the question here is asking us to find out which of these statements are not correct. Because if we had used not incorrect, then none of the options would satisfy. So which of the following statements is or are not correct? So we have five statements here. We need to find out which of these is false. One, water and minerals and food are generally moved by a mass or bulk flow system. And this statement is true because in plants, the bulk flow system is xylem and phloem, the vascular tissues. And these vascular tissues, the xylem takes care of water and minerals, phloem takes care of food and other organic solutes. So therefore, statement one is true. Statement two, bulk flow can be achieved either through a positive hydrostatic pressure gradient or a negative hydrostatic pressure gradient. Let's take the example of plants. Positive hydrostatic pressure is given by the roots in the form of root pressure. And the negative hydrostatic pressure gradient is given by transpiration. So statement two is true. Statement three, the bulk movement of substances through the conducting tissues of the plants is called translocation. So when we're talking about passing a fruit through the xylem or phloem, we use the term translocation. So the statement is again true. Number four, xylem translocates organic and inorganic solutes, mainly from the roots to the aerial parts of the plants. Now xylem does transport from roots to the aerial parts of the plants. 
So this fragment is true, but the fragment that's false here is organic and inorganic solutes. Xylem transports water, minerals, some nitrogen, which may be organic or inorganic, and hormones from the roots to the aerial parts of the plant. So statement four is false. Statement five, phloem translocates water, mineral salts, some organic nitrogen and hormones from the leaves to other parts of the plants. Now again, leaves to other parts of the plants is how the phloem transports stuff, but the stuff that it transports is not water, mineral salts, organic nitrogen and hormones. What phloem translocates is organic and inorganic solutes. Therefore, option five, statement five is also false. So over here, we find that statement four and five are false. And when you look at our options, we find that option C is the right option. So these two statements are incorrect and we have proved that by looking at each statement in analytical detail. If we had selected A, B or D, then we would have said that statement two and statement three are wrong, which would be incorrect. So A, B and D are incorrect because they also have correct statements inside them. But C, in C, both four and five are the statements implicated, which are false, which are not correct. So option C is the right option. And that was the last question, which concludes this episode of NEAT preparation. So we have a lot of videos on NEAT preparation. And so be sure to click the links in the description down below. And for accessing more of our useful and interesting free educational content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Brain Blitz Audios. So we'll be back with more interesting content such as learner words, mind maps, need preparation, CBSE board exams, etc. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye for now.